is up, Insomniacs? Midnight Sun 518 here. I know I look a little sweaty. Uh, it's because it's hot outside and uh, I've been working. Anyways, yeah, so today we're going to be installing the Switch Pros. Uh, well, Switch Pros. And uh, Power Tray mount for the Switch Pros in my uh, 2017 Tacoma TRD Pro. Sasha. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be getting the under the hood section uh, thrown out in this video. Uh, there's going to be a second video that's all the inside of the cab uh, portion like running the wires into the cab and removing the uh, dashboard replacing the dashboard mount yeah so uh, this video we're gonna be knocking out the power tray um, and getting all the wires trimmed cut fitted uh, and then we'll get that guy thrown in under the hood um, and then next week or not next week two weeks from now when the next video comes out we'll have the uh, inside portion so without further ado we're gonna hop into it and uh, I hope you guys enjoy Catch you in a second. My dudes, we finally got it. Bada bing, the Switch Pros. We're gonna be getting this guy installed today in the truck. Um, I'm gonna have to split this video into two parts, but uh, for this kind of beginning here, we'll kind of look at what we got. I bought this thinking I was gonna need it, but uh, it did come with the kit, which makes a lot of sense now that I think about it. But I got more stickers, so that's cool. Cali raised off-road uh, is where I got all of my parts for this to include that uh, little panel that's going to go. It's in the box over there. It's going to mount inside of the uh, the dashboard. So coming straight out of the box here, got a couple of heavy things and a crap ton of wiring. So this right here is the switch panel system. This thing is beefy and expensive. All right, so we got that guy in here is the actual Switch Pro's eight panel button assembly itself, right? Little buttons on the inside. Uh, yeah, this thing is sick. It's super clean looking and it's backlit with colors, RGB. Also in this package, we have just some uh, protective like wire cable cover stuff. We got a whole bunch of different types of that, right? Um, <laughs> oh my God, there's so much. Uh, this right here, this conglomeration of cables, um, is, is what's going to run from the Switch Pro's panel inside of the truck to the gigantic block that I was holding just a second ago that'll be mounted to the power tray under the hood, and that's what this plug goes to. And then this guy right here, this plug is going to go to that block that I had just a second ago, and then all of these individual cables, well not all of them, but most of them are going to be attached to the... Uh, individual slots on the power tray itself. I'll show you that in a second when I get into the second box. And then of course we have a ground right here. But each of these, uh, some of them are doubled up, right? Two gray, two green, two blue, two purple. Um, and then there's one red, one orange, one yellow, one black. And what that is, is you have the higher amperage, uh, like the bigger light bars and that kind of stuff are gonna need uh, more current carrying capability, right? Going through the Switch Pro. So those are gonna be going through the dual lead um, slots while smaller ones such as puddle pods and whatnot that don't really need to take as much electricity um, or current is going to be going through the individuals also in here we have uh, a whole bunch of accessories right so we have zip ties we got a little cable extensions we got uh, these plugs here these are actually really neat so these basically clip between uh, the wires themselves and they'll bite into a wire inside of the car so you don't have to strip any insulation back so when we hook into the ignition line we literally just plug this clip it right onto the ignition line and then we can plug that in into this guy and it's already connected and we don't have to mess with anything uh, with the car itself yeah so that's the first box and uh, once again these are bought separately so this itself is the switch setup um, most of this is going to be inside the hood a little bit run to the car uh, but we're going to open up that second box yes yeah, so this one the eight switch panel power system with the rgb backlight and then the other one is the power tray itself that goes under the hood so let's go check that out all right let's see if i can't get this through this one a little bit faster before my gopro dies um so right, <laughs> right now it's the 05 to present tacoma vertical switch pro power tray with install kit for the trd off-road and trd pro so cracking into it right right away we got a whole bunch of some thick boy cables right all of these are going to be run between the battery and the actual power tray itself um but this right this is what i was getting at <laughs> that goes into the power tray itself so this entire setup in here 
Um, we have this terminal block. So this is what those, that bundle of wires I was showing you earlier. They're gonna be hooking into one side of these um, and then the opposite side, right? Obviously they're shorted together with that metal bar, right? To create contact is gonna be sent to whatever light fixture that we're gonna be hooking up on the car. And it doesn't have to be lights. It can be your air compressor. It can be refrigerator. It can be, you know, whatever the heck system that you have that needs electricity in your car can be hooked up to this, um, which is pretty, pretty sweet setup. Uh, but yeah, that'll be the other side of this. And of course these run to the big bundle of cables that I showed you, which plugs into that big block, which plugs into the actual eight button panel so that you can turn things on and off individually. And then we also have the actual power tray itself. Uh, this guy actually looks pretty sweet. So you can see it's upside down right now, but right up here in the corner, the little big P for power tray. All right, y'all, so I just read through uh, the manual here. I finally figured out what these wires are. Um, so we already knew about all of these ones, right? So we have two purple, two green, and two gray. Uh, and there should be another dual, sorry, two blue. So those four, oops, I can't see it too well. Those four colors, um, the purple, the blue, the green, and the gray are all 35 amp output. Uh, so these are your larger light loads, uh, probably like your rooftop light bar um, and stuff like that. Or say if you have like multiple puddle pods or something hooked up to the same uh, output switch, those are what you're gonna use the higher rated um, cables for. I'm not saying these wires are rated higher. I assume that they are all the same, but because there is two, they can carry more uh, current, right? And then each of these, the red, the yellow, the orange, and the uh, weird dark gray-ish color. You can't see it too well. I'll have to turn the light on here. The sun's going down. Uh, but those are all your 20 amp um, cables. So single single cables, 20 amps, um, and those are for your smaller things. These four cables right here, you have your black wire, your ground, that's gonna be hooked up directly to the battery negative terminal. Um, and that was already pre-crimped by the uh, Switch Pros company before they sent it out. And then these three, these are the fancy ones, right? So the blue one, this one, the light blue, is your ignition wire. Whoop. So the ignition wire, uh, is it turns everything on when you turn the car on, right? So it doesn't prevent you from, say, pressing a button on the Switch Pros to turn on some headlights or some interior lighting or your puddle pods or something like that that you have hooked up to it um, whenever you want to, just like you can turn the dome lights on in your car while the car's off, right? But when you turn your ignition on, um, and you have certain things in the car happen, certain light sets turn on or whatever, um, this is what's gonna control that. To include the backlight for the Switch Pros itself, the, the button panel, right? Um, obviously you don't want that on all the time because it'll draw off of your battery and that's not a good thing. Uh, so yeah, that's why we have this one. The white wire, this guy right here, um, this is one of your trigger input wires or your lights uh, as is written on the side there. So basically this one, you can hook up uh, specifically say if you want your dimmer of the Switch Pros itself, right? Because it has two different brightness settings. Uh, obviously when it is dark outside and you turn your headlights on, the dashboard in your car is going to dim, right? It's going to be less bright because you don't want as much light pollution inside of your car as that messes up your nighttime seeing, right? So that's what this does. It will uh, dim the Switch Pro's um, backlight itself uh, whenever you turn your headlights on or, you know, whatever you have hooked up to. That's what I'm going to use it for. Uh, yeah. And then this pink wire is your second trigger wire. Uh, so kind of like this one, right? You hook it into a certain system um, and it'll do a special thing. In this case, whatever buttons, whatever switches you have hooked up to this trigger wire, um, Whenever you perform an action, all of those switches will be actuated at once. So say when I turn my high beams on, I want my roof rack light bar to turn on at the same time as my high beams or my grill light or something like that, right? Uh, that will happen uh, through this trigger wire. So as soon as I turn the high beams on, it sends a signal through this trigger wire and says, hey, turn these you know, two switches on the Switch Pros on and that will turn on with whatever lights you have hooked up to that. Um, so that's what that's for. This is the power trays. Uh, 
Well, tray. <laughs> also got this little support bar here. Uh, I'm gonna be working on getting the um, bus bar, sorry, the terminal block, uh, as well as some of these other little parts and pieces mounted onto the power tray itself. And this will be going up under the hood. And uh, yeah, came with some supporting hardware. So we're gonna kinda get this guy thrown together. Um, that way I can start fitting the wires. All right, so I flipped it around, but there you have it, just like that. So you got the Switch Pros mounted, bus bar, or sorry, terminal block, bus bar, and then whatever this thing is. Um, and it does sit like that is really kind of the front side of it. Uh, I believe that this is gonna be a mounting plate onto the truck itself, um, but I haven't gotten that far, so we're gonna find out. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna connect, we have this little ground cable, um, and it's gonna go between the uh, bus bar and the fuse block. So this is actually, yeah, the fuse block, that's what it is. I wanted to call it that earlier, uh, but I wasn't 100% certain, so I didn't. Uh, but yeah, so this guy, I have him a little bit loose, him a little bit loose, um, and I'm gonna be able to set this dude right between these two, and that will allow the bus bar to be, uh, well, a ground, right? You can attach any ground for any of your lights or whatever you're hooking up to any of these screws. So yeah, we're gonna get that guy thrown up. Basically, I tighten these two guys down, and then I tighten down these four screws. These two I tightened prior to putting the ground on. So now what we're gonna be doing is I can cut this guy wherever I put the dang pliers. So you can see these ones, most of them are pretty much the same length. And then you have your ignition and your two trigger wires that are extremely long. So we're not gonna mess with those. Uh, but what I am going to do, uh, I'm going to plug this into the Switch Pros itself, this little brick here. Um, and then we are going to measure and cut the length for our terminal block. All right, so I got you all a bit of an angle. I wanted to uh, help me out. Stop eating my keys, cat. All right, so this guy is going to be plugging into this dude right here, obviously goes in until it, until it snaps into place. Uh, if you look at the front of the Switch Pros, it does have uh, a legend as to what wire is what switch. So looking at the switch, you can see all the different colors that are coming out. You got the, and this looks more like a brown, but I have a gray. I mean, I guess that's a brown, I don't know. So these guys um, are need, need to be routed up underneath the Switch Pros up against this terminal board. So when it comes to setting up your terminal board, you can kind of set it up however you want, um, as long as you remember what goes where, right? So we know what each color is coming out of the cable bundle. Um, and then each of these, I'm pretty much what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So eight, these are the eight switches. Um, and then I'm just gonna have them number order from left to right. So according to the, uh, the book itself, our First cable, this brown one, uh, is switch number one. So I'm gonna start out by just kinda lifting these guys up here and running them up underneath. So there you have it. This is how I have it set up at the moment. So I've got it plugged in there. All of the cables coming out, the trigger wires in the ground just kinda dangling down there to the side. Um, I ran them up underneath the switch pros, trying to keep them a relatively even length around their little loop there. Um, then I have them tapped into each of their slots in the terminal board uh, with switch number one on the far left, that's the brown. So the next step is I'm basically gonna go along here, right? And I'm going to snip uh, each of these wires at all the same length. Uh, in fact, I'll probably take a Sharpie and just kind of run a Sharpie down here real quick so that I can pull them off and then uh, cut them, strip them from there. 
We're gonna be using these guys right here. Uh, so these blue ones, these small ones, ooh, they even give you an extra. How nice. Uh, I might do a practice one, I don't know. But yeah, so these blue ones are gonna be for the individual wires, which is one through four. Those are your 20 amp uh, cables. And then these large yellow ones are gonna be for switches five through eight, which is your 35 amp or the dual. So basically we're gonna cut for the dual, we're gonna cut them, we're gonna strip them, and then we're gonna crimp them inside of the same uh, little lug here. And these are heat shrink, um, so we'll be using a heat gun to melt them down to the cable. And what's neat is that they're actually filled with a type of glue. Um, so once they heat shrink down, that glue actually melts um, and seals around the cable, creating a waterproof, allegedly, connection. Um, yeah, and then we just run them back into this line and screw them down as is. So let's get cracking. Okie dokie. Uh, so I got me some handy dandy Craftsman wire strippers, right? And you're going to be using the uh, AWG, um, that's American Wire Gauge, I believe. Uh, but Gauge 12 is the gauge of this wire. That's how thick it is. Um, and then we're going to be using, of course, the blue crimp uh, lugs. And then on the crimper, um, this I just bought off of Amazon. Uh, literally has each of the colors labeled out, which is much more convenient than uh, I thought it was going to be. But yeah, so we uh, cut the wire. We uh, stripped off about a quarter of an inch. You'll see inside, so hold this one on our finger, inside the metal portion of the actual um, kind of lug that sticks out, sticks out there. So this is an uncrimped one. Um, that is about a quarter of an inch. That's about how much you want to strip. Um, you want to strip back a little bit more than that. You can kind of see the copper coming through. Sorry, my nails are dirty. I was out in the, in the yard all day. You can kind of see the copper showing through a little bit there. Um, yep, but then you crimp it down, make sure it's all the way at the end, crimp it down, and then, uh, yeah, we'll heat shrink them all at the end, so that's what it looks like. And then give it a little tug, make sure it didn't come off. Cute cat. All right, so I ended up taking the plug off. I uh, just made it a little bit easier. Um, and then I cut all the wires individually. I'm going to get them crimped, um, but I just wanted to show you. So with all of them sitting nice and pretty right next to each other, you can see that they are all slightly different sizes. Um, and that's just because of the location that they're gonna be going to. So yeah, I just wanted to show you that. So there you have it. They are all crimped together uh, and looking good. So I'm gonna hit these guys with a heat gun um, and then show you what it looks like once that is done. So now they are all um, heat shrunk, hit with the, the heat gun, right? And they came out uh, not bad. They're a little, a little, a little toasty and a little warm. Uh, so I'm going to let these guys cool for a minute. Uh, but next step, I'm going to be taking the Switch Pros back off, right? Because it's going to make it easier for this next step for the install, right? Uh, so we're going to take the screws off, pull this off. Um, we're going to hook up all these wires on their um, specific screw on the terminal board. Um, and then we're going to use, we're going to heat them up again, right? So that they're a little bit more flexible. And then we're going to use the Switch Pros to bend them downwards and allow uh, them to kind of be neatly tucked into this whole segment. Now I have all the wires running from the plug um, into the thing here, right? So I'm gonna hit these with a heat gun one more time just to make them more flexible um, and bendable. I'm gonna bend them down by taking the switch pros here, gently pressing this against the cables and then pushing them um, until the screw holes line up. All right, and there you have it. They're all bent into place, and they are relatively even. Uh, granted, uh, this is my first time really doing anything with wires, so uh, could have come out, you know, better. But all things considered, I think I did pretty good. Um, but yeah, so there is that. All right, my dudes, we're now in the garage. We've got Arrow here. We'll be taking her out for a ride tomorrow. Uh, and this is under the hood. I already took the plastic off of the fuse panel. So the next step, right, is we're going to be uh, setting the power tray in here. It's going to be in this space just uh, backwards of the fuse panel. So we got two screw holes right here. Um, those will be threaded in place. And then we also have, I finally figured out what that long bar was. Um, that is a support plate that's going to be for the left side of the switch pros. And I'm getting eaten by a bug. All right, so it is recommended. Uh, by the company that you thread the bolts 
that are uh, supplied completely through here um, before you actually start installing the plate because as you can see already you get filled with some gunk it is going to be a 12 millimeter bolt head okay there you have it i'm going to get this guy in here so he will be setting up right along that edge there oh boy which means that we have to find the sweet spot now i won't be tightening this down immediately another reason for taking off the uh the fuse box cover there because it gives you more room to work with Okay, now that we got that guy on there, loose as it may be. So y'all can see, so I got the power tray right here. I'm trying to keep my, my flashlight going. So this piece, right, is going to be going all the way down to there. See that bolt that I'm tapping? This is the one that we have to remove in order to hook up the bottom uh, to it. And the easiest way to do that, probably is gonna to be to go through the wheel well. That's what they did in their uh, video. I had to look it up because uh, I wasn't sure what the heck I was mounting to. But I think I might be able to do it with just a socket. And that looks like a 10 millimeter down there. So uh, let's see what we can do about this. Hey, uh, don't be like me and install it wrong the first time. It needs to go in this way. So that screw hole, I, th I assume that there was two um, because I figured that there were supposed to be two screw holes, but I only have one down there. No, it's so that you can fit the bracket around your fuse box. So you're going to be using this left screw hole, um, and that's going to be going down, and that'll allow the bar, I'll show you once it's installed, but the bar to clear the edge of the fuse box so it's not in the way when you're putting it on the power drill. Um, before I tighten it down, it's all still very loose, right? But we have the one screw up here at the top of the bar. You can see how, look at the flashlight on here. You can see how the uh, edge of the bar clears the fuse box now. So I'm gonna start with the screw down at the bottom of the bar. I'm gonna tighten that guy up, right? Make sure it's relatively vertical. Um, and then from there, I'll just kind of level out the fuse box as best as my eyes can see. Um, and I'll tighten down the left nut there, and then I'll get these two on the right. So that was genuinely a horrible experience. So these two screws on the side here, these two bolts, Literally, this one, the socket didn't really fit on because this tray, uh, the distance between the tray and the bolt itself were just slightly too small. So that one took a long time. And then the one in the back, um, I had to move literally one click at a time on my ratchet. And there's really no other way to get anything else in there to do it the other way. Uh, but I got it on there and it is solid, man. It is not going anywhere. So the next step here, we got our ground cable. Um, and this is going to be run from this connection right here to chassis ground right here. Um, this is the, this black cable right here is what's running from my Raptor lights. But once again, I'll be taking those off and putting them over here. Switch Pros through a 45 degree bend um, on this cable because it's going to run up through here and very easily and conveniently attach onto that. Um, ground spot right there so they recommend to start with that uh, you hook up this side before you do the other um, so i'm going to get this nut off uh, or this this bolt it looks like a 10 millimeter i'm going to get this guy taken off and i'll snap this dude on top so i decided that i'm actually going to run my ground cable behind this uh just plastic support for the, the fuse and relay box here um just because it keeps the ground cable just kind of back and out of the way um, and then especially when you're going to put the cover back on this guy I didn't want to have to be fighting to get that underneath the cable or anything like that so I ran it behind this and uh, now I'm gonna get it screwed onto there and there you have it all nice and tightened down and connected there and it's uh, all good and tucked out of the way which is super nice and convenient and you just kind of like slap this little plate back on top boom so next we got these power cables that we're going to be installing right one of them is a little bit longer you'll see uh, a little bit longer right 
the shorter of the two cables is uh, actually going to have two different sized holes um, on the ends. The one with the smaller hole is going to be what we're going to be using uh, at the moment. Fast forward a little bit, we got this rubber grommet here, and this guy is going to pop right into place right here, and that's in there. And then uh, we're going to remove this plastic cover right here. So basically, uh, this cable, the shorter one, the one that has the tiny hole, we're going to have to feed this up through the hole in this guy. Uh, they recommend putting just a little bit of oil or something on the outside to make it a little bit more slippery. Um, and then that is going to get set right here on this terminal, and that's giving power to this uh, fuse block. Um, and then from there, we're going to be taking the longer cable, and we're going to just run it up underneath the Switch Pros here and connect it to this uh bolt and with a little little, little nut right there and that is going to be supplying power to the switch pros uh itself so let me get those installed and i'll be right back sweet that actually went on super easy um like i said just take a little bit of a little smidgen of oil uh just use some old motor oil that i have sitting in the corner from uh last time i cleaned or changed the oil in my truck Take this guy, just kind of adjust it until it slides right over on top, just like that. Just put it right back down in place. Next, we're going to be taking the uh, big cable, just like I mentioned before. I think I'm probably going to end up running it just like I did this ground cable here. I'm going to tuck this guy out. Uh, we're going to be running it back right up the back and uh, hooking it into that spot. So it like, and there it is. So she is all attached and installed. I have it running directly underneath. Um, and they'll be going, I believe, to the left. I think I'm putting them in the battery terminal. I'm going to look at the next step in the book. But So we got the one on here. And we got the one on right there. And those are the power cables. So the next step here is we're going to actually be hooking these up to the battery tray itself. So we have this dude right here, this little uh, bus bar with fuses on it. Um, and effectively, why is it always when I start talking that we have massive trucks coming by? Anyways, yeah, so we're gonna be going right here. Uh, I'll be taking off the positive terminal, uh, this nut for the battery, and then this is gonna mount right here. And then these two are gonna house our two power cables for the Switch, uh, Switch Pros and the uh, fuse panel right here. So yeah, let's get going. Switch Pro uh, cable is gonna be hooked up to the blue fuse box. I'll show you that here in a second, because they are rated differently. The blue one is 125 amp, and the yellow is 100 amp. So the blue, which is the Switch Pros, is gonna go, I'm gonna move it to the left just so that I can keep these guys straight and organized, right? And then we got our flat washer, our lock washer, and then our nut. And then the fuse block power cable. Once again, flat washer, lock washer. Oop, I'm gonna drop it into the engine. Start looking like a mechanic. And then the nut. Now that is busting. Dad joke. Alrighty, well there you have it guys. Uh, so we do have the under the hood portion of the Switch Pros installed. Uh, like I said, this is part one of two parts. Um, the second one, stay tuned, it'll be coming out very shortly. Um, but yeah, so this was the power tray and the SP9100 Switch Pros itself. Uh, the power, the like, command module, whatever you want to call it. Um, <clears throat> mounted underneath the hood, hooked in and wired up and, and ready to go. So in the next video, we're going to be getting the actual uh, Switch Pros 8 button switch panel mounted inside of the, uh, the cab. And on top of that, getting the new uh, dashboard mount installed for it as well. Um, I did originally purchase the SDHQ dashboard mount for the Switch Pros, however, it really isn't exactly what I want. Um, it will function the way that I want it to. However, um, I want to add a, an extra button for my puddle pods, and I won't be 
able to do that with you. Hello. I won't be able to do that with the uh, SDHQ uh, mount for the Switch Pros. I'm just gonna pretend that he's not there. That's so cool. Never had that happen before. Um, but anyways, yeah, so uh, we're gonna be able to get that installed in the next episode. But for now, if you guys have enjoyed, uh, if you have, please hit the like button, subscribe. Uh, I promise you there will be a part two coming out very soon. Uh, so don't worry about it. I may do a double feature. You know, maybe release this one on a Thursday instead of a Friday, and then release part two on Friday. I don't really know yet. Probably gonna do that. Um, but yeah, if you guys have enjoyed, help me out, like, and subscribe. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Midnight sign out.